of the screen is visible yes sir so hypertrophic active cardiomyopathy is a relatively common disorder among the cardiomyopathy this is the most common type and it is also called the idiopathic subiatric stenosis because it will affect the left ventricular outflow and it is the cause of sudden cardiac death in young people including well trained athletes and the women equally across all races and mostly it results from asymmetric septal hypertrophy causing outflow obstruction of the left ventricle so cardiac output is suddenly decreased in an acute fashion that is the most important pathophysiology that happens and uh, it is not diagnosed until a significant cardiac event has occurred that is the unfortunate thing about this so it suddenly happens and you find yourself in a miserable condition so the hypertrophy can occur in any segment of the left ventricle but most commonly it occurs in the intraventricular septum this often results in obstruction of blood flow through left ventricular outflow that is through the aortic IOT, valve the flow is suddenly decreased and the condition is usually asymptomatic in children but may first present with sudden death in teenagers and adolescents this is again and again and repeating because of the uh, nature how it happens in this this uh, is now coming to the etiology it can be a familial form because uh, you, you may have a similar uh, incident happening in the family somebody else some relative would have died suddenly like this so it may be a familial form which is most common autosomal dominant genetically transmitted disorder you know what is the meaning of autosomal dominant sondarya what do you understand by this autosomal Dom dominant the male pairs um, male only affected in the family and all only one parent person. one parent will be contributing to the gene okay yes. when you say autosomal dominant Uh, only one parent may contribute to the gene which is causing the disorder. Whereas when you say autosomal recessive, both the parents have to contribute the gene. Okay, so that is the meaning of autosomal dominant. It is not the male or female. One parent, any of them, can be giving the gene which is responsible for the disease, and it can occur without family history or de novo mutations. Also, sometimes uh, uh, mutations can happen. Uh, without any reason or uh, anybody in the family is suffering like that and it uh, causes mutation in the uh, gene that encodes uh, the nine sarcomeric proteins like b myosin heavy chain troponin actin all these proteins can be affected so this causes structural abnormalities in the myofibril and myocytes and that lead to abnormal fourth generation and conduction abnormalities this is what happens in the hyoid and because of the consequence of this there is asymmetric left ventricular hypertrophy in the, in the absence of other causes the other causes of that apart from the familial and non familial mutations of the gene it can happen also because of heightened sympathetic stimulation due to excess catecholamine secretion or it can abnormally thicken coronary arteries which may not dilate normally so this may lead to ongoing aortic ischemia which lead to ventricular fibrosis and compensatory hypertrophy and thirdly abnormal microcirculation that prevents normal contractile function of the myofibril So these are the other non-familial or uh, non-mutation of the gene causes of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Also, the pathophysiology classified as obstructive and non-obstructive. So obstructive is the most dangerous type. Dynamic outflow obstruction is due to systolic anterior motion of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. and this happens because of the impingement of the mitral valve leaflet to the septum so it uh, almost occludes the outflow through the aortic valve so outflow tract becomes dynamically obstructed causing a pressure gradient okay so the degree of obstruction depends on the contractility and the loading condition how much of uh, blood volume is there in the left ventricle is called the loading condition 
so how much it can fill up and how much volume is there which has come from the left atrium to left ventricle is also an important part and this can happen at rest also in, uh, but in majority brought out only by provocative measures like exercise and anxiety so in the minor milder form it will not happen at rest but it could happen only when you stress the heart and most of the these cases have abnormal diastolic function also because the ventricular wall becomes too thick it is not able to dilate that much the reduction in the uh, filling also happen that is called the diastolic dysfunction so increases in left ventricular pressure impaired ventricular filling it can also further exacerbate the obstruction and because the coronary vessels are filled during diastole a combination of outflow tract obstruction and ventricular stiffness there is an increased risk of myocardial ischemia this is what is the reason for the sudden death so this also may be responsible for uh, ventricular arrhythmias and sudden death is the how the mechanism causes this particular problem and uh, in severe cases this obstruction can happen even at rest also if they need not train themselves and more commonly it is a provocative maneuvers like exercise which causes this it also increases the myocardial oxygen demand is another reason why the patient suddenly dies now if you see the history and physical examination there is always a family history we have to probe and find out whether there are uh, any relatives who had a sudden cardiac death and majority of the patients are asymptomatic that is the reason why it is not detected most of the time and dyspnea is the most common complaint if at all patient becomes symptomatic and, uh, they can also complain of syncope angina palpitation or dizziness etc in cases where they are lucky to have the symptoms we can investigate and find out and the symptoms are definitely exacerbated by exertion so they say that even walking for a few steps causes this problem apart from heart failure you have to think of this obstructive cardiomyopathy and severe cases it may present with congestive failure symptoms of uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea like edema and dysautonomia physical examination if they have congestive failure may show jugular venous pulse elevation s4 heart sound all these things are in very severe cases which have become very symptomatic and uh, uh, there may be a murmur which is a, a gradient depending on the ventricular outflow tract <coughs> which will have an increase in the preload so starting and half to the hundred so if the uh, patient has a increase in the preload that is if the left ventricular filling is uh, good then you have a murmur which is in the happening in the uh, gradient will be more uh, whereas the gradient and murmur will increase i mean will will be decrease if there is a good uh, filling inside but if the filling is low then you will have a decrease in the preload and the gradient also will increase to push that then brain natriuretic peptide levels may be elevated in severe disease this is one of the diagnostic objective diagnostic criteria which you can think of the chest x ray may sometimes be normal but left ventricular hypertrophy may be also seen in cases uh, where the uh, apart from septum the left ventricular walls also have to can ecg may show lvh pattern and uh, they may also show arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation or non sustained ventricular tachycardia but uh, 2d echocardiography is a very important modality to diagnose this so you can also do a color doppler to find the mitral valve regurgitation or the outflow obstruction and reduced left ventricular compliance can be seen in diastolic dysfunction and the key features are asymmetric septal wall thickening and systolic anterior mitral valve movement and we can think of a cardiac mri as a gold standard for diagnosing left ventricular wall properties cardiac catheterization is not required for diagnosis but you may perform it to determine the degree of outflow obstruction left ventricular anatomy 
mitral valve regurgitation and coronary artery patency. For that reason, cardiac catheterization may be required. We can also do a radionuclear imaging which reveals defects in the absence of coronary artery disease. Now, coming to the management, mild disease is treated by lifestyle modification. Patients should be strongly advised to avoid strenuous exercise and heavy lifting of weights. Very, very important. And medical management is by beta blockers and cardioselective calcium channel blockers like Biltiazem. And uh, you must avoid angiotensin converting enzymes and nitrates. So that it, because you have to maintain the afterload in these patients, which uh, is very important. And uh, surgical intervention is reserved for patients resistant to lifestyle and medical management and with an outflow gradient of more than 50 millimeters of mercury. So that can be measured uh, using either the uh, cardiac catheterization or the echo. And septal myectomy is a surgical treatment and alcohol ablation also have been tried. And patients thought to be at risk of sudden death may be benefit from internal cardiac defibrillator. So those who have the arrhythmias, like uh, especially ventricular arrhythmias, it is better that they are treated with internal DC defibrillator, cardiocardiogram. Coming to the anesthetic management of these patients with established uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we have to continue all cardiac med medications till the day of surgery. If they have been given anticoagulation for atrial fibrillation, then you have to consult the cardiologist and then think uh, which drugs you can continue, which drugs you have to stop or whether you require a breathing therapy. Especially parfarin has to be stopped three or four to five days prior to surgery, and then you can go for uh, unfractioned heparin, which has a shorter half life. Then monitoring you can do the routine ECG, pulse oximetry. The ECG should have an automated ST segment analysis, and you can go for an arterial line and uh, IJV cases where it is a major tragedy or where you expect a lot of fluid change. Mm. We can attach the defibrillator paddles in position if the patient is not going to be in supine position. For example, if you want to do a uh, nephrolithotomy or some other procedure which is going to be in the lateral or in the prone position, it is better to attach the defibrillator paddles because one of the commonest complications is ventricular arrhythmias, which can happen in proximity. Then prophylactic antibiotics 30 minutes before induction. And uh, if the pacemaker or defibrillator is already there, you have to integrate and uh, take necessary steps as you manage for pacemaker. Always preload the patient with 500 ml of normal saline so that mm -hmm. the volume is adequate in the left ventricle. Now, the goals of the management are prevent occurrence of LVOT obstruction, that is to maintain uh, cardiac output all the time, prevent arrhythmias, prevent diastolic dysfunction. These are the three important goals. Now, this is the common. Uh, Mnemonic to remember in all cardiac cases, whether they are valvular or whether they are ischemic heart disease, any cardiac patient, you remember these uh, six points. P stands for preload, A stands for afterload, C for contractility, R for rate, R for rhythm, and the I for ischemia or ischemia prevention. So the preload in this case, it should be augmented with fluids. So you know, don't uh, start, I mean, fluid restriction. If you are going to have six hours of NPO, better to I give IV fluid, as I told, if, uh, 500 ml of saline or vital lactate can be given to augment the preload. After load, you have to maintain the systemic vascular resistance. No sudden hypotension or vasodilatation should be allowed. Contractility, you can reduce the contractility by accessing the sympathetic activity because it will increase the icardial oxygen demand when chances of ischemia are more. Rate, you have to keep the rate low without the tachycardia, because that will again will increase the oxygen demand, also will affect the left ventricular outflow. Rhythm, try to maintain sinus rhythm all the time. 
and leukemia prevention maintain left ventricular filling and diastolic pressure this is very important to prevent ischemia and this okay so if your plan if your surgery needs ga avoid anxiety induced tachycardia by adequate pre medication avoid fall in svr during iv induction avoid sympathetic stimulation due to laryngoscopy and intubation avoid reduction in svr by high doses of inhalation agent avoid intraoperative pain hypoxia hypercarbia maintain adequate fluid volume avoid later plane of anesthesia avoid sympathetic stress during emergence also okay so these are the things that you have to take care of if the patient is requiring ga if it is a regional anesthesia think of low low spinal with uh, uh, an adjuvant like opioid or alpha 2 agonist there have been case reports where they have used just 1 ml of uh, 0.4% heavy dutuvacaine with uh, 25 mg of fentanyl or uh, dexmedicomidin and added out uh, surgeries which uh, require a block only up to 3 12 or 3 and uh, the other option is uh, going in for a titrated epidural with a catheter where you give incremental doses to achieve the desired level and combined spinal epidural also is a good technique where you can give an initial smaller volume and then hands the level if you want with the epidural top up so all these things have been done and uh, in the, whatever be the central neurochiral blockade you do try to avoid a sudden fall in svr adequate preload treatment of hypotension with phenylephrine as a drug of choice not uh, ephedrine as you right usually do and uh, it can be given as a bolus as well as an infusion to maintain the blood pressure without <coughs> causing a drop in atria ensure there is no severe lvot obstruction before choosing cnb in patient with hypoxia so pre operatively you have to go through all the records and see the echo report and see how severe the lvot obstruction so if it has been described as a very severe obstruction avoid something you rest you are afraid totally okay? that is the precaution that we have to do okay